We're now to 3.0, which is citizens' participation. I do have some guidelines, so if, you, if you're speaking tonight, if you'll make sure you listen to these guidelines and help us adhere to them. Lexington County School District 1's Board of Trustees solicits the advice and counsel of its citizens. To encourage this participation, the board provides a citizens' participation period during each of its regular monthly board meetings. In order for you to speak, you must be the parent, legal guardian of a student currently attending a Lexington District 1 school, a taxpayer residing in the Lexington 1 district, uh, excuse me, Lexington District 1 attendance area, an employee of the district, or a student currently attending a Lexington School District 1 school. You may comment on agenda items, school operations, policies, programs, or other matters. You may not speak about specific individuals, whether students or staff, because we have other methods for you to bring those particular um, individual items to our attention. We want to remind you that this meeting is being live streamed and that the recording of this meeting will be part of the public record in perpetuity. So I think we all know this, but once it goes on the internet, it never dies. So make sure, if you're, especially if you're talking about your own children, that that is what you want to live on the internet forever and ever. So just remind you, want to remind you about that. We want to give everyone who came tonight an opportunity to speak. And in order to do that, we will call on each speaker by name and ask you to approach the lectern at the back of the room. The board will not reply to your remarks nor take any action during the board meeting in response to your comments or questions. This is your time to talk to us and this is our time to listen. So we're here to listen to you. You may address the board for up to three minutes. Please do not clap or make any comments either while an individual speaks or after he or she finishes. As you came in tonight, you received a card to fill out if you indicated you wanted to speak. That card asks for your name, address, and other information. However, when we call you up, we will only read out your name, the town you reside in, and the name of the schools your children attend when it is your turn to speak. If you did not fill out a card but wish to speak, Please hold up your hand and someone from the communica communications office will provide you with a card. Is there anyone else that didn't fill out a card that wants to speak tonight? Okay. And as always, um, our information is on the website and we, we can be contacted by phone, we can be contacted by text, we can be contacted by email. We will meet you in person. I have had lots of coffee at McDonald's and Rush's. So if somebody wants to uh, talk with us and they don't feel comfortable about, comfortable about speaking in a big group, there are other ways to contact us and we love to hear from you. So please, we welcome all messages. At this time, I'm going to call on Stephanie Burquist. She lives in Lexington and she has children Shane and Sydney. They're in the 7th and 8th grade and she wants to talk about going to school five days a week. So Ms. Burquist. Hopefully. Can y'all hear me? Okay. Um, thank you for letting me speak, and I apologize for the lack of brevity in this. I have very little time to prepare anything for this. Um, I do have two kids. They're both in middle school at Beachwood, a seventh and an eighth grader. We can all agree that those ages uh, alone have their own difficulties, even though they're wonderful. So um, on top of that, we've got all this going on. Um, let me be very clear that I'm here in advocation for a five-day school week. Our kids need to go to school five days. Um, not only am I here in advocation of a five-day uh, school week, I'm here to advocate that those kids can go in the capacity in which they and or their parents feel comfortable. Whether that means mask or no mask, whatever it is, they need to be able to go to school five days a week in a capacity in which they feel comfortable. I think one of the biggest problems is there was an opportunity presented for parents who wanted to give their kids online school. That's fine. Kids can go to school five days a week online. There was not an opportunity given to parents who want to send their kids to school five days a week. That was given to no parent. Um, I know I'm super short on time. Um, I want to talk about some exep exceptions that are made every day in school. Um, there are kids that are not vaccinated that go to school all the time. No problem. That's fine. The district makes that exception for those kids. Hats, certain hats are allowed, certain hats are not based on religious things. Those are exceptions made every day. We make exceptions every day in the world, in the nation, on the state level, on the school level. Every day we do this. 
Um, sports. My daughter's a cheerleader. They have friends on the football team. My daughter cheers at the school five days a week. That's an exception. We make exceptions every day. I'm happy that she's there touching, lifting, throwing other cheerleaders. The, the football players, I'm happy for that. If they can do that, why can't they go to school five days a week? I mean, my opinion. Um, that's about some of the exceptions. Um, not to mention the, the legalities. Again, um, we have a right as a nation, as Americans, as parents, as, as kids to assemble at any given moment, anywhere, peacefully. Whether that's here right now, whether that's my teenagers going to school, they have that right. I have their right as their parent, and that is our right as being part of this great nation and this district. We are not being given that right. That right needs to be given back to us, back to them, and they need to have that opportunity to do that. Um, I'm super short on time, so I just want to talk about uh, everything else. Let's talk about the parents and the kids suffering. I think the online teachers are doing a great job. I talked to two of them today in the middle of a meeting. I had to take out, step out of my meeting to take phone calls for my kids who usually make all A's and B's. My kids are struggling, and the teachers are struggling. The parents are struggling. And thankfully, I have a retired husband, and we have very flexible schedules, but the parents that have to work full time my friends that do this, I, I don't know how they're doing it. Um, again, I've got eight seconds. The bottom line is I am in huge, huge advocation for legal reasons, moral reasons, psychological reasons, and ethical reasons that they go back to school and in which a capacity in which everybody is comfortable, meaning having the right to go back in the way that they feel safe, mask or not. Thank you all so Thank much. Thank you, Ms. Burquist. Thank you. Okay, we're now going to call on... Ms. Smith, if you could hold a minute. Because she wasn't masked, we have to wipe the whole Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay, great. We're now going to call on Jesse Ryan. Is it Oates or Oaks? Oats. Oats, okay. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Oates. Um, he has children at Pleasant Hill Elementary and Pleasant Hill Middle. He resides in Lexington. He has an eighth grader, a sixth grader, a third grader, and a second <laughs> grader. So, Mr. Oates, go ahead, please. That's and right, he wants to you. talk about face-to-face -face instruction. That's right. And I'll echo the, uh, the comments uh, that have already been made. I want to speak particularly about the district's immersion program. All four of my kids uh, participate in the immersion program. And immersion does not work if you're not immersed in the immersion program. I am a product of Lexington and Richland Five Schools, and I studied Spanish for 872 years at Dutch Fork High School and Clemson University, and I don't remember any of it. And my kids are not immersed in Spanish when I am trying to Google Translate all of their instruction into math and science. This board is a great board. It's a visionary board, and I appreciate the pioneering spirit um, that this board has showed over the course of decades uh, with programs like that, it is a casualty of this A, B schedule. It is at an absolute casualty. It doesn't work. It will not work. It will not um, continue to be effective as it has been um, without in-person instruction five days a week. Um, I'm an attorney by trade, so that, uh, that, that entitles me to represent and advocate for clients before the, state, uh, the courts of the state. My clients tonight, again, are my kids, my wife, unofficially, I believe, um, based on the ones that I've spoken with, my kids' teachers who are just as frustrated as we are. Um, I'm happy to report, some of you probably already know, that the, uh, the Chief Justice has opened the courts of the state up to jury trials, to full business. And so those dockets are moving, excuse me, those dockets are moving, and that's a great thing. I think that's something that our society has missed uh, over the course of the last several months. Um, I don't believe there is any substitution for five days a week instruction. And because there is no substitute for that, there should be no excuse for this board not returning to that ASAP. Um, if the private schools can do it, if the sports leagues can do it, if the court system can do it, Lexington District 1 can do it. Thank you very much for your time. Oates. Okay, I'm now going to call on Mr. Kevin Helton. He lives in Lexington, and he ha he wants to talk about the five-day school week, and he has children at 
Meadow Glen Elementary School and Middle School in the fourth and sixth grade. Mr. Helton. Hey guys, good evening. I'm echoing the same thing. The kids need to go back five days a week. Um, my son's in middle school. He's making the transition from elementary. He's dying. He can't keep up with the Google Chromebook. It's too much on him. They, he's, he's crying every night because he's, he's missing homework. He's been marked absent for not doing assignments. It's just too much. And then my youngest son, his teacher's got an accent. He's got these stupid masks on. He can't understand her. Cold and flu season's coming up. These masks are going to do more harm than good. She, we need to have a right to either wear a mask or not wear a mask. If you're that afraid of it, wear it. But if, it should be mandated. We, need, we all have rights too, and I think we need to go back to that, and we've forgotten that. But the big thing is we need to go back to school five days a week. These kids are struggling bad. They didn't get the help last year. They missed half the year. It hadn't been made up. They haven't reviewed anything. They're just diving into the new material this year, and they can't keep up with it. So we need to go back to five days a week. That's all I got to say. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Hilton. Hey, at this time, I'd like to call on Stephanie Mower. Um, Ms. Mower lives in Columbia, and she is a teacher at River Bluff High School. So Ms. Mower, and she is going to talk about face-to-face -face and advocating for the hybrid model. Hello, my name is Stephanie Mower, and I'm a teacher at River Bluff High School. I'd like to start by thanking Dr. Little and the board for your transparency while na navigating through the waters to reopen our school safely. I truly value the confidence and the respect the administration of Lexington One School District has for its teachers. I stand before you to ask you for a few minutes of your attention because I care about the health and safety of our children uh, and all of our community members as a whole. I'm passionate about teaching and will do anything for my students, even the most trying of circumstances. As a teacher, it is uncommon to be expected to do the impossible within, with limited resources and time. In my 10 years experience, I must say, I never thought I'd encounter anything like what we're dealing with with, with the COVID-19. I believe that the hybrid model, not returning to school full time, is the best option to ensure the highest quality of education for our students while abiding by the CDC guidelines. The hybrid model is the best fit for our students' health, the learning environment, and well-being of all teachers and staff. Although we are, not, we are only a few weeks into the fall semester, it's been exceptional adherence to mask wearing and social distancing, but we are still seeing occurrences of students contracting the COVID-19 virus. Perhaps we know that many students who have, had, who have contracted the virus have not done so through their time at school. But in our current social environment, there is a shame or a stig stigma associated contracting the virus, regardless of the caution of the person who contracted it. There is a view that the people who have contracted the virus have done so because of their negligence or bad behavior. While I don't think that's true, I do think that the stigma could cause students to be afraid of repercussion from their peers during the very impressionable time, therefore neglect to get tested or self-report. There, there is evidence of kind, this kind of reaction in an experiment conducted by renowned behavior economist Dan Airely. In his experiment, <clears throat> and offered, he offered ten, students $10 to take an STD test then he gave them the option to receive the results. Students received the $10 regardless of the receiving the results, and still there were less students who opted to get their, their uh, testing results. His study supported the natural human avoidance of bad news or news that is shame-based. Despite their best intention, we cannot expect students or parents to be the best stewards, stewards of their health. It would be better to have the hybrid model in place to mitigate the risk of single student negligence of reporting COVID-19 and in turn spreading the virus to countless others. I won't argue against the benefits of in-person education for our students as I have seen in both academic studies and my 10 years of experience that students benefit from face-to-face -face education. I'd also argue that the turbulence and the stress 
uh, are often a birthplace for innovation. My students have been so resilient as teachers last spring and summer abruptly revamped their entire curriculum to accommodate distance learning. I've seen coaches, administrators changing everything about how they do their job, and I've seen educators and health with health conditions have to reluctantly opt into 100% virtual uh, teaching because they're, they understand the implications of contracting COVID-19. Ms. Moore, do you mind kind of getting to the end because you've run out of time? And we have a lot of speakers tonight. I apologize. Okay. Thank you for your time. Oh, well, good. well thank you. Okay, at this time I'm gonna call on Kathy Roden. Um, she lives in Lexington. She has a child that attends White Knoll Elementary and she wants to talk about face-to-face -face five days. Ms. Roden? Good evening, my name is Kathy Roden and my son is in first grade at White Knoll Elementary School. I am not qualified to be his first grade teacher. And because I am expected to be his teacher, 60% of the academic week that's three out of the five days. I feel that he is not getting the quality education that he deserves and is expected from such a highly rated school district as Lexington One. White Knoll has many qualified, educated, and experienced teachers. They need to be teaching my son in a school environment, not me at home with distractions and also trying to do a full-time job at the same time since I am working from home. I feel that my son is potentially falling behind in his education and the core knowledge that will be the foundation for his future academic endeavors. Will he catch up? Probably. When? I don't know. But this is a great and serious risk, a gamble with my son's future. Is the probability of contracting this virus so high or the probable result if you do so detrimental that it negates face-to-face -face in school instruction? My opinion is that the risk of contracting this virus is very small compared to the risk of my child potentially falling behind in his education if he does not receive in school face-to-face -face instruction five days a week. When making your decision, I implore you to use data and logic, not emotion and fear. The world is not a perfect place. You must also allow flexibility. As you have allowed parents to choose at home virtual instruction, you should also give me the opportunity to choose what is best for my son. That's five days of in-school instruction five days. Thank you for allowing me the time to express myself and voice my opinion, even behind this mask that keeps sticking to my lipstick. <laughs> well, thank you, Ms. Yates. Okay. No, Ms. Roden, I'm sorry, I'd already flipped my card. Thank you, Ms. Roden, I apologize for that. Can I just say that it is a Southern thing to wear lipstick under our masks, isn't it? <laughs> okay, at this time I'd like to call on, thank you. I'd like to call on Susan Yates. Uh, she lives in Lexington. She has a child that attends River Bluff and she wants to talk about five day a week instruction. Ms. Yates. Good evening, everybody. My name is Susan Yates and my daughter uh, Morgan goes to River Bluff High School. And I am here today to advocate for um, the hybrid model as well as virtual school. My daughter does the, the virtual school at this point and the reason that we chose not to do hybrid model was because we knew that there was going to be so much pressure put on this board to not follow science and to get people back into the schools. Um, she wanted to be able to go back but we felt that in this public health crisis, in a pandemic that is real, that we needed to make sure that she was as safe as possible. Um, at this point in South Carolina, there are many people that don't wanna wear masks. There are many people that don't think it's real. There are many people that are in denial that we're in a pandemic. And um, this, 
The United States has lost over 200,000 people to this virus. The state of South Carolina has lost, I think, 6,000. So um, I don't see how in the world we can allow thousands of children to get back into school and be side, side by side. It, it just doesn't make any sense. This is not, it's not like this is something that any of us have ever gone through ever in our lives. This hasn't happened since the Spanish flu. We have to be able to adjust. I think that it's terrible that people are having such a hard time making sure that their kids are educated. And I do not envy any of you for the job that y'all have to do, because this is a terrible time. And um, I don't know I don't know what else you can do to make sure that your, the children are safe, their families are safe, and their community is safe. That's what this is about. This doesn't have anything to do with my rights and all this other kind of stuff, at least in my opinion. What it has to do with is the health and safety of our children. Thank you. We have a great opportunity to reinvent the idea of school this year. Let's not blow it attempting to pretend that we are able to continue to provide services to the level that we have grown accustomed to. I will be the first parent to say that I cannot homeschool my kids. I pay taxes in order to send my kids to school where people who have very specific degrees and skills trusting that they will graduate high school, college ready. For 11 years, I have tried to be a staple in my child's school, volunteering and supplementing resources at home when needed. As a parent, I've been privy to conversations on social media posts where parents are expected I would, but the time's going. As a parent, not a problem, I will slow down. As a parent, I've been privy to conversations in social media posts where parents are expecting magic from this year. Issues that have always existed within our schools are currently being put on blast like they are new. Teachers all teach differently. Teachers in the same grade can have different expectations for their students. Kids can have a good teacher and a bad teacher, no matter what method is used to actually teach them. None of these things should be looked at as, the pan as a pandemic reaction. Acknowledging these truths first, I would like to express that over the course of the summer, the public was told that kids don't get sick, kids don't transmit. The validity of that statement can really be seen now that schools are all back in session. Knowing that symptoms may not appear for possibly 14 days, the state of South Carolina currently has 423 students that are positive in our schools. The CDC currently shows 1,580,162 children that are anywhere from the ages of 0 to 18 that have all been diagnosed as positive since the pandemic has begun. With that information, the public now knows that being defined as a minor does not give you a free pass from the virus. The CDC also shows us that being a minor does not likely lead to death. So I am not implying that all our kids are going to die if they get sick. But if we also look for the, at the number of positives among the ages of 19 above, the potential for more ser severe case of COVID and knowing that you need adults in order to run a school, those are the numbers that are more of a concern to me when deciding if we should return to school at all. I am lucky. I am a one-income household with a reliable internet. I assist multiple kids in various grades, but none of them have any special needs other than the normal I am a kid issues. I do not assume that most households are like mine. I understand that there are cases in which children need to be in school. Instead of focusing on a demographic, uh, instead of focusing on if a demographic should have priority in face-to-face -face learning, the option was allowed for everyone. There are times where people do not have the same level of need and that fact should be able to be expressed and applied knowing that there will be people who are unhappy, but also knowing that sometimes being an individual in a position of power leads to potential for negative side effects. When making the decision for face-to-face -face instruction, did the school board consider if all kids should have the priority when allowing them to go back? Did you ask yourself the following questions? Are they disabled? Are they on an IEP that requires in-person assistance? Are they in a household where all parents work? If the answer is yes, those children should be distributed around the district, that social distance can be maintained. And I'm going to be out of time. So I'm going to email you this because I worked very hard on it all day. 
Good luck with whatever you decide. Have a great night. Hello? Hello? Okay. 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 Can you see okay with it? Mm-hmm. Hi, my name is Madison Holland, and I am a new student at Pleasant Hill Elementary School. In my opinion, I think we should all go back to school for five days. It's very hard starting at a new school and making friends while wearing a mask and social distancing. From, uh, from what I've seen being back at, sc at school, all of us want to be in school for five days. E-learning three days is, a week is very hard. I only get a, a one hour Zoom meeting with my teacher on Friday mornings from eight to nine. I don't understand why I'm allowed to go to softball practice and dance practice, but I'm not allowed to go to school for five days a week. I may be young, but I'm smart enough to know that this is a, and this is a crucial part of my childhood. Kids want to be in, uh, in school for five days a week. Thank you. Thank you, Madison. Mm -hmm. And I think, is this your mother? Welcome back, Miss Brittany Little. She spoke with us at our last meeting, and she is a Madison's mom, and uh, they, she has children at Pleasant Hill Elementary, so uh, she wants to talk about five days face-to-face. Miss Little? Okay, hey guys. Uh, first of all, let me just say I'm piggybacking off of last week, and trust me when I'm saying I'm speaking on behalf of hundreds of families in this district. My newsfeed is slammed with parents who are dying right now with hybrid. Um, it's killing all of us. Elementary school kids are different than middle school and high school kids. They're more capable of doing online work than younger children. Um, my daughter has three days of virtual work where she's doing slides of busy work. Um, she's not really learning anything. Um, like she said, there's one hour of Zoom meeting with her teacher every week. That's the only one-on-one -on -one she gets during those three, three days. Most of it is them telling her to read a book or take a break or do page 17 in her math workbook. Um, the kids that are learning five days virtual are getting a totally di different education than the students that are doing hybrid. Um, I just don't understand why we don't stick to the plan that we had since day one. I feel like the numbers are dropping. I understand why you started the school year the way that you did, um, but if you look back, the reason that we started the lockdown was to prevent the hospitals from giving overrun. Clearly, that's not an issue anymore. So, um, as with the flu, as with everything else, it, it happens. Um, it, it's not worth doing this to our children. Um, my kids are going crazy. Um, my kids, my son has been in daycare, my daughter's been in daycare since day one in March, and nobody in the daycare has gotten COVID, gratefully. Um, but I feel like children, you know, are different with this virus, in my opinion. Um, a lot of parents are sacrificing a lot being in the school district. Um, they don't have the extra money for the extra child care. Um, while as other school districts very close to us are doing five days face to face and are totally fine. I feel like I don't understand where my tax dollars are going to. Um, I'm paying $25,000 in student loans still, 300 a month. I don't know, I need to know who's going to pay for that while I'm trying to teach my children for three days a week. Um, I just think that it's ridiculous that I have to pay for my child's education or fight for my child's education that I pay for. Um, after totaling it up, hybrid's costing me $9.50 a month. Um, my daughter also has to go to her father's house in Fort Mill. I piggybacked off that last week. Um, everything together, it's costing me close to $1,000 a month um, with child care. I can't do it much longer. Unfortunately, COVID is real. Unfortunately, um, you can get it from anywhere at any time, but teachers are essential. I'm essential. Doctors are essential. Nurses are essential. Cops are essential. Um, how are baggers in a grocery store, bartenders and servers more essential than the teachers teaching my children? Um, this is my kid's future, you know. Um, we're all scared of catching COVID or giving COVID to a loved one, but this is the reason why we wear masks. Um, I just feel like we need to go back to normal life at some point, and I need to know when that's going to be because, I mean, although I see y'all saying, you know, it's going to be this, it's going to be then, are we ever going to go without no masks? I just feel like this is 
the start of COVID, the whole reason we did this was to prevent an overflow of patients in a hospital. And clearly, the numbers don't add up. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Little. Thank you, Madison. We appreciate you coming. Okay, I'm going to call on Amber Decease. Amber lives in Gilbert. Um, she wants to talk about the five-day school week, and she has children at Gilbert High and Gilbert Elementary. So, Decease. I'd offer to hold that for you. <laughs> He's good. Um, I have a first grader at Gilbert, and my niece, Cadence, she's um, at the high school at Gilbert. My big issue is the mental health. I am absolutely an advocate for the five-day week because of the mental health. In high school, they're not able to keep up. They're not teaching them the way they ought to be taught. My sister can't help my niece. She doesn't have the time. She doesn't have, she, she just is not able to help my niece. As far as my first grader, the home is not a learning environment. There's too many distractions between the baby and just everything in the home. It's not working. It's, we need the five day week for our children, for their education. And it's as simple as that. My niece calls me crying every night because of the pressure she is under. <sighs> children should not feel this stress at that age. It's not acceptable. A five day week is the only way we can make this work. We can't have our kids growing up and being as stressed as they are and expect anything to come of it. We need them to learn how they can learn. I don't care about the mask. If they need to wear masks to get in school five days a week, by all means. But it, it needs to be a five day week. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Cease. And thank you for bringing your little one with you. Um, at this time, I'd like to call on Justin James. Justin has a, a first grader, a fourth grader, and an eighth grader at Meadow Glen Elementary and Meadow Glen Middle. He's a resident of Lexington, and he wants to talk about school options, I think. So, uh, Mr. James? Hi, everyone. Um, I want to say that I can tell that the school board's incredibly resourceful as they have managed to obtain the only Clorox wipes in the county of Lexington. <laughs> so given that you guys can get Clorox wipes here, I'm sure that we can figure out a solution to this issue. I can say that I was one of the biggest proponents of lockdown initially. I was horrified that the board waited until March 13th to lock us down. All the signs were saying that we need to lock down. All the scientists said we were, that we need to do that. Now, having looked at the evidence, looking at the, at the information, looking at the experience of my children going to the hybrid model, I say we need to be in school five days a week. It's just simply impossible. Right now, it's too little and too much at the same time. It's too little school for my children to get a proper education. It's too much to be asked of me at home to take care of three children to actually not taking care of them. That's easy enough, right? I got a 13-year-old, so I just throw some boxes of Cheez-Its at them and everything's gonna be fine, but it's too much for me to shepherd my children through actually learning at home. I've got a full-time job, I've got a lot of stuff going on that makes it impossible for me to oversee a first grader or fourth grader and eighth grader doing their work. The only way for me to get this done would be if I were to quit my job, and I won't be able to pay the taxes that keep everyone employed. So it's a real problem here. Um, it's not just about me being unable to do my job or me being unable to be a good parent, a good teacher, for my children. I'm not a specialist. The teachers have taught us quite well over the last few decades that their job and the purpose of the schools is so much more than actually just instruction. If that were the case, I'd say buy all my kids a Khan Academy uh, membership, give them a Chromebook, and we can just sit at home for the rest of the time. We could shut the schools down and save that 365 million bond that we just voted for last year, right? The reality is, is that these kids are not getting an education at home. The three days a week that they're staying at home, they're getting virtually no education, no education. At this point, I prefer, instead of getting a hybrid model and keeping that, I prefer we shut the schools down for the remainder of the year. I prefer that we shut the schools down, 
Next year, we can pick up where we left off, or perhaps January, and compress one school year into six months, and then pick up in the middle of uh, June or July and do another six, and then get back on track. I prefer that. I prefer to furlough all the teachers, lay off the staff until then. I prefer that than have to my kids attempting to get what amounts to 20 to 30 minutes worth of work a day at home, which is completely ineffective and useless, and call that a year of education. It's silly. I prefer to just shut the schools down than not be in schools five days a week. And that's coming from somebody who supported the lockdown. That's coming from somebody who politically says that I should be not in favor of schools returning. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. James. At this time, at this time I'd like to call on Ms. Allison Purdy. Uh, she's a resident of Lexington, and she has a child at Pleasant Hill Elementary and Pleasant Hill Middle, and she wants to talk about face-to-face. -face. Ms. Purdy? Thank you. Good evening. I am here on behalf of the students that are not getting the education they deserve. Our kids love our schools, and they love our teachers, and they miss them so much being at home right now. They need social interaction. They need friendships. They have fallen so far behind in the last six months. They have lost their love for reading. They have lost the ability to focus. They have lost their passion for school, and they just don't care the same for doing schoolwork on a computer. I'm here on behalf of the teachers. They are working so much harder than ever. They are working longer hours, nights, and weekends. They're neglecting their families and their own children. They are doing everything in their power to hold it all together. They are not here tonight because they are afraid of speaking up and saying how they truly feel. They're afraid of losing their jobs. Most of our teachers want face-to-face -face five days because they know it's best for our children. They love our children. They love teaching. They just don't love teaching this way. And that's due to the fact that they know the kids are not getting what they deserve. I'm here on behalf of the parents, the ones that are working full-time, trying to figure out how to become a teacher after 10 hours of a work day. The parents that are barely holding it together, trying to juggle the emotional roller coaster that is for their, going on for their kids. The parents who don't have the answers because they don't know what Common Core math is. We are all very stressed. We are all very tired. We all want what's best for the kids. We were given the option to choose 100% virtual or face-to-face. -face. We were not asked if we wanted a hybrid model. We've tried the hybrid model and see it's not working. We also see we're not having major cases of COVID pop up in our schools. We can't continue to live in fear. Our private schools and daycares in Lexington are face-to-face -face five days, no masks, no issues. In Lexington, my kids went to summer camp all summer for 16 weeks with no masks, going on field trips, and not, no social um, distancing. There were only three kids that had COVID the entire summer at their camp, and they all got it from their families. No one else got it. There are several cases where one family member has gotten it, but nobody else did. My family was one of them. This virus isn't as contagious as we're being told. Local doctors are telling us this. We currently have kids and teachers in masks all day. If they are in masks, we don't need to keep them six feet apart. If we aren't gonna be in school five days, then we don't need to have masks on our kids all day long. Please do right by the kids and the teachers and the parents and agree to five days face to face. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Purdy. At this time, I'm going to call on Jessica Becerra. Um, she lives in Lexington, and she has a fourth and a third grader at Lexington Elementary, and she wants to talk about the hybrid model and special needs issues. Ms. Becerra? Okay, I wanted to speak to you tonight on behalf of my two children and any other children that fall into the special needs or at-risk category, whatever you want to call it. One reason many parents do not speak publicly in a forum like this is because this meeting is a matter of public record. And most parents try to keep their children's health information private. I'm praying tonight that my children forgive my message as I hope that what I'm about to say brings a much needed change for many students. My children attend LES and they are both a testimony to the amazing work of their teachers and administrators. My oldest child is autistic with central auditory processing disorder, ADHD, and generalized anxiety disorder. He is in a mainstream classroom with services and speech and resource and thrives in a face-to-face -face environment. All that know him consider his progress nothing shy of a miracle. He has had a village both at LES and at home working to keep him ahead 
so that he can stay in a regular classroom. My second child has a 504 and severe ADHD and receives services for RTI in reading and math. Um, a day in the life of online hybrid school is simply not working in our house. Um, neither child can stay focused through the transitions of the online workflows or maintain engagement long enough to make it through those. My oldest child has auditory processing, and when all he does is to listen to online lessons, he retains nothing. Neither of my children are independent, and I'm having to listen to the lessons, create my own lesson plans, and then figure out how to teach them the best way they can understand. Meanwhile, my husband and I have both been working since the beginning of all this and have not had a break. My husband is police and I'm a nurse. Our children have been shuffled to many places do not, and do not complete their work until 9.30 at night. Both Governor McMaster and Molly Spearman have urged opening of schools five days a week to special needs or any at-risk children or simply any parents that are struggling to teach their children at home. As a nurse, I completely understand the risk, and right now the flu is a greater threat, and we have not canceled face-to-face -to, -face to deal with seasonal influenza epidemics. My children are suffering with anxiety because of the lack of structure and struggling academically because this method of working is not, this method of learning is not how they learn. Changing a grading scale is a mere band-aid on a gushing artery. The ripple effect for, for my children is that my oldest child could get so far behind that he no longer can function in a mainstream classroom and be transitioned to an LD self-contained. My second child will likely repeat a grade. While this may seem minimal to most, it's huge to each child and the decisions that affect them. What do you think the ripple will look like district-wide if this continues? I am certain that I'm not alone in this struggle, but it is my sincere hope that you make a decision to allow these students to have a choice to be back in the classroom five days a week. As healthcare worker and police officer, my husband and I have worked tirelessly to stand in the gap for this community, and it's time that this school district stand in the gap for our children. I know what's best for my children is having their support system around them, which is Lexington Elementary. I urge you to feel the struggle of every child, walk a mile in their shoes in order to understand the gravity of what is ahead if free entry is denied. Please stand in the gap for all of our children that will be left behind. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Becerra. Okay, and my last card for the night is Ms. Dominique Jones. Um, Ms. Jones has children. She has a child at Carolina Springs Elementary and a child at Northside Christian, and she wants to talk about five-day-a-week uh, schools. Ms. Jones? Mr. Jones, I am so sorry. And I wanted to ask, Mr. Jones, I, I, we can't hear you. Can y'all help him with the mic? Is this better? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask, when did adults stop being adults? I have sat here and I've listened to people speak, and everyone comes up to this mic, and time after time I've heard you say, well, I can't do this. My kids aren't getting this because I can't do this. I can't accommodate. It is our responsibility as parents to make sure that we take care of our kids and not only take care of our kids in a sense of making sure that they get a good education, but they are safe and healthy at all times. I am an advocate of the hybrid model. Um, I do believe at some point we need to return to five days a week, but my whole thing is when do we start talking about solutions versus complaining about what we're dealing with? What safety measures are we gonna put in, into place to make sure that everyone is able to have a functioning school? Um, there's been one person that came up and he offered some solutions. I didn't necessarily agree with the solutions, but he did offer solutions. Uh, everyone else has spoken about my freedoms, my rights. I should be able to pick this. I shouldn't have to wear a mask. The science behind this entire situation, behind this pandemic, speaks to what we need to do to be safe. I'm speaking as someone who's dealt with and has been essential from the very start. I've been in the public. I've interacted. I've crossed multiple state lines. I've seen this develop. I've been on military bases. I've been in boardrooms. I see how this is being handled. And for us to politicize this actual pandemic just because we want to stand on blue or red is not the right way to do it. We have to think about the safety of our kids and we have to think about what can we do to make sure that they're able to go to school and we can attend to their mental health, but we can also attend to their physical health. So today, Am I agreeing with going back to school five days a week? No. Do I think that's important? Yes. But before we even look at going back to school five days a week, we have to look at these are the safety precautions. 
We have to look at masks. We have to look at social distancing. We have to look at the ways that we sanitize, clean, and how do we keep people safe. Once we're able to meet all of these items on the checklist, then we can move towards five days a week. But without having those solutions, there's no way that we should move forward. Um, I, I come as a concerned parent and someone that is new to the school board meetings. Um, again, my name is Dummy Jones, and I will be here for the next couple of meetings, and I look forward to getting to know everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Okay, that's my last card. Do we have any more cards, Catherine? Is that it? Madam Chair, if I could insert something right here, I, I wanted to make everyone aware that this is not a board decision. The reentry program or reentry plan, uh, I think Dr. Wood plans to cover our next step a little later tonight, but uh, many of you here to address the board tonight, and I want everyone to know that this is not a board decision. It's an operational matter, and those decisions are made by the superintendent. That's just for the record. And Ms. Like Lynn, I, I'm something. sorry, but I'm going to tag on to what Mr. Anderson said and said, although the board does not vote on it, um, I know I could probably speak for the other board members in saying that um, I don't sleep very well right now worrying about this. Um, and trust me, every single position, um, situation, attitude, um, observe everything that everyone shares with us, whether they speak or email or text or call, um, it makes an impression, it means something to us. There's so much information and um, opinion right now and no answers. We, we've never done this before. Um, and we are, um, it, it is an incredibly um, weighty decision to know how to proceed. And the path is not clear. Um, and just so you know, I just want everybody, I really appreciate everyone that took the time to come and speak to us. Um, and it's very, very important for the board that we take the right steps, um, even though we really, at this point in time, we don't know what the right steps are. Um, you know, six months from now, we'll know what the right steps were in September. Um, but right now, we don't really know what the right steps are. Um, and so I keep hearing everybody talk about having grace. Um, and I just hope that, you know, as we move forward, we're doing this, like Dr. Little says, we're stronger together. Um, and just, you know, know that um, everything that you've said matters um, and it means something to us and we're considering it um, and i think about it at, when i'm awake at night and can't sleep um, so i just wanted to add that because um, it really does um, it weighs on us it, it's a it, you know we, we've never done this before and hopefully we will never do this again um, but thank you so much for taking the time to come and talk to us so. Okay, we're now going to go to 4.0, which I think is what everybody's here for. I have something oh. to add as well. Okay. Um, we're not voting on this. I guess the board made this decision. I'm not sure who made this decision. But there are other districts and boards who do allow board votes. So I'd just like to make that clear that this is a decision that was made within Lexington 1. No, it's a decision based on the contract we have with, with Dr. Little. And that's why we're not voting. This is... The ownership of the operational piece falls under Dr. Little. We fall under the governance piece, but he is definitely working with the board. He's working. He's going to share with you in just a minute all he's been doing to uh, get some answers for everybody. And I think everybody's going to be real pleased when they hear everything he's done to work towards a, the best solution we can come up with now. Um, I would like to say if anyone wants to leave, because I know some of you get a little anxious about staying in a room with this many people. This is being live streamed. If anybody would like to get up and leave at any time, you're more than welcome to do that. I didn't want you to feel like you're locked in this room for the rest of the night. So if you want to uh, go and, and listen to it on your phone or, or see it on your iPad or your TV, 